or they, they, they yell, and then they get shot. And it's, it's literally, that's all. So I'm sitting in the booth, and I'm waiting for the engineer to find where Soldier A's little thing is. And I'm sitting there quietly, and I just start, to myself, I start going, Soldier A, Soldier A, the unsung hero of anime. And, and David Williams is on the other side of the glass, and he goes, And I'm like, I'm just trying to get psyched about Soldier A, dude. I'm just, just trying to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to love my character. It doesn't matter that he just goes, ah, guys. I care about Soldier A. I'm making up a song for him. So two weeks later, I come in to record again with David Williams, and David goes, hey, Vic, you jerk. Thanks a lot. And I'm like, whoa, what'd I do? He goes, we haven't stopped singing Soldier A. He's like, it's like a cancer in our brain. It won't go away. And I was like, I'm sorry, dude. He goes, what if she's going to write a whole song? I'm like, okay. So I, so I recorded, so I, I wrote this song, you guys, and shameless, shameless plug. It's actually on this CD. And I had Chris Patton and Jay Hickman, both great voice actor friends of mine, come to my studio. I have a recording studio in my home. And we did the whole song. And it sounds like kind of a, a Navy men's chorus. It's, it's very good. Okay, it, I'll give you one verse. Give you an idea. Imagine like a snare drum cadence. Can you hear it? Yeah. Soldier A, Soldier A. The unsung hero of anime, hip hooray for Soldier A. He only has one line but saves the day. He's called upon to grunt or yell or scream, even if his mouth is never seen. Through the fray, with ne'er to say, he'll lead the way, he's Soldier A. great lines in it. It's like, a monster or a mecha or a guy, doesn't matter which, I'm gonna die. He's courageous, brave, and dangerously strong, but he won't be around for very long. Because <laughs> his platoon gets blown away, so let us pray for Soldier A. It's funny. It's a fun song. Uh, question. Yes. See what I mean? We're out of time. You guys, shortly after, those of, a lot of you probably know about this, for those of you who don't, shortly after we started recording Full Metal Alchemist, I just fell in love with the show. And I got really excited about it. And I was at a convention, much like this, and uh, somebody asked me if they could take a picture of me wearing their red coat, like Ed's coat. And I'm like, cool, I've never worn the red coat before. This will be fun. So I put it on, and, and all of a sudden, <laughs> And, I, and, and somebody yells out, you should cosplay as Ed. And I was like, no, I shouldn't. Because Ed's 15 and I am not. So, uh, so, so I'm flying home. So I'm flying home on the plane and I'm thinking, what would be a plausible story whereby a guy my age could dress up as Edward Elric? So, well, so, um, so I made up this story. It's the story of a, of a fanboy, a full man, like me, for instance. And, uh, and he's watching, like, a full metal marathon. He's just watching it, like, all day long. And the doorbell rings, and it's a UPS guy, and he leaves a package on his, on his doorstep. And he opens it up, and it's the state alchemist pocket watch that he ordered off eBay. So being the geek fanboy he is, he's all jazzed and he, he opens it up and he's so excited and he wraps it up in his hand and he clutches it close to his heart and he just keeps watching Full Metal.
Later on that evening, it's nighttime and he's, Full Metal is still on. Now he's up to like episode nine or 10. And you, and you come and you come and you see him, he's sleeping. Oh, he's fallen asleep on the couch while watching Full Metal Alchemist. Well, what you come to find out is that the pocket watch has magic powers. So without revealing too much, the next morning he wakes up and he starts turning into Edward Elric. Nice. First he's got the hair, then he runs to the doctor's office to find out what's wrong with him and he gets in the elevator and he, when, he, when the do elevator door opens, he's in the full costume now. And then later on he gets an auto male arm and, and here's the kicker, he, everywhere he goes, he keeps seeing homunculi. Like, like across the street, just glaring at him. Now what I didn't tell you guys was, what I didn't tell you was that when I wrote the idea and I started thinking, you know what? No one's ever done this. No voice actor has ever made any kind of a fun, little live action parody where they cosplayed as a character that they'd done. No one, not, no, none that I know. And so I started calling some of the other voice actors in Full Metal. I called Monica Real, I called Mike McFarlane, I called uh, Caitlin Glass, and, and Chris Sabat, and Aaron Dismuk. Come, suffice it to say, a lot of the voice actors in the show cosplayed as their characters in, the, in this little short thing. So we shot it, we put it all together, and it's called Full Metal Fantasy, and it's very funny, and it's wonderful, and I made it for no other reason but to share with you guys. I mean, that's the truth. I don't sell it. It's not for sale. Um, it was purely a labor of love. Um, in fact, you know what? I'll tell you a little story real quickly. Somebody wrote me an email and he's like, I have to see Full Metal Fantasy. I'll pay you. I'll pay, I'll pay you $800 if you'll give me a copy of it. And at first I'm thinking, okay. <laughs> and then my conscience got the best of me and I'm like, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. So I didn't. But point is, I, I made it just for the love of the show and, and to share with you guys. So, what's going on with it, I know this is a long answer, what's going on with it is that about a year after I started showing it, some of the legal uh, people at Funimation, Full Metal Fantasy started getting a lot of attention. The fans really enjoyed it. And, uh, and they didn't, a lot of people didn't expect for it to be so well received. And so they suddenly got worried that perhaps the Japanese company that owned Full Metal Alchemist might get mad that we made a live action Full Metal kind of a parody without permission. Well, of course, my point was, what do you mean without permission? We're not selling it. We're not taking anything away from them. In fact, many could argue, we're promoting the show, for goodness sake. I mean, how cool is it that the actors in the show love it enough to make something like this purely for the fans. Well, they didn't really see it that way. They were really afraid that the Japanese would get mad because we didn't get permission. So they asked me not to show it. And I firmly believe that that's a temporary deal. I think that once Full Metal kind of evens out, you know, and, uh, and is not so, uh, not so much in the forefront as it, as it was when it came out on Cartoon Network, I think the time will come when I'll start to be able to share it with you guys again.